Okay, Straight Goods is here with uh, Paul Manley, and uh, he is a filmmaker who's recently created the film You, Me, and the SPP, and it's beginning its cross-Canada tour uh, on Parliament Hill this week, um, October the 1st, 2009. Paul, uh, the SPP is uh, something that a lot of people have considered to be a, a sort of a dead issue. Why is the timing uh, now a good time to, to put this film out? Well, it's... They announced on the uh, SPP.gov website that it was no longer an initiative of the three NAFTA countries. But in fact, most of the, the this agenda has already gone forward or is continuing to move forward. So I think it's basically a splitting up of the target and moving everything around because the SPP was became this huge target. It's a overarching, encompassing agenda. You know, 300 regulatory areas include security, uh, the you know, police and security infrastructure, the military, everything else, and and it's kind of like project for a new American century, where they just put everything into this huge, big, overarching issue uh, agenda, and then you can look at it; it becomes a massive target. And they were realizing it was a massive target, and they, you know, wanted to do something about that because people were getting upset about it. So I guess I. I should have explained that SPP stands for uh, Security Prosperity Partnership, and how do you how do you break that down? How do I break that down? Um, like, what is it about? Is there anything secure, prosperous, or um, anything else about this about this deal? Well, it's very Orwellian, is what it is. I mean, everybody wants security and prosperity, and partnerships are great, right? Let's all get along, but. Uh, yeah, it's really f security and prosperity for the the um, corporate elite, and and it's really a, a process of corporatizing corporatizing the, the way our infrastructure and regulatory system is set up. So, you know, they they were the ones that were making the decisions about how we were going to harmonize our regulations and standards and practices between Canada, the United States, and Mexico, and that was being done through you know, 10 largest corporations of each country uh, that made up the North American Competitiveness Council, which is 30 corporations. And here in Canada, we had uh, Walmart and Home Depot representing us. And, uh, you know, it's kind of a who's who of the military industrial complex with uh, Lockheed Martin and General Electric, uh, the pharmaceutical industry with Merck, uh, Manulife and uh, Scotiabank, you know, huge corporations, Ford Motors, Chevron, that are making the decisions. List, the list goes on and on. Um, I, I guess I, I understand that the film, you know, stars most of the usual suspects you'd see um, uh, talking against this uh, particular initiative. But uh, tell me how, why you were unable to, uh, to get, I guess, uh, some sort of balance, get the other side. Did you try? What happened? I definitely tried. I I tried for 18 months. I wrote letters, I wrote emails, and I made phone calls, and I documented all of that. Uh, to I went through a bunch of different ministers because they changed over time, and uh, the prime minister's office. I tried to get interviews with the um, Fraser Institute, with the Canadian Council of Chief Executives, and none of these people wanted to talk to me about the Security and Prosperity Partnership on camera. I was told by the Fraser Institute that... Uh, they kind of looked me up on the web and said we were way too far apart on this issue to even start a discussion. And, um, you know, I was ignored completely by the Canadian Council of Chief Executives, and I was ignored a lot by the uh, the ministers, and then I started sending them registered letters and then recording phone calls and, you know, really pushing, saying this is it. I want to I do an interview. I'm doing this documentary. I have a deadline to get this thing done. And... I want to do an interview. Can you at least respond to me and let me know whether you're going to participate or not? And I'll make myself available wherever you are available to do an interview. It must have been very discouraging then. Uh, what what prompted you to continue going on with this project and what inspired you in the first place? Well, <clears throat> it was uh, I kind of fell into it by accident. I was asked by the local chapter of the Council of Canadians to, to document a presentation they were making to municipalities about TILMA, the Trade Investment Labour Mobility Agreement. And I was working on another film in Ontario, and I did a little side trip to Ottawa and did interviews with uh, Gordon Laxer, Maud Barlow, and Theresa Healy and Aaron Weir at um, uh, Canadian Labour Congress. And what I, I, had knew, I knew something about the Security and Prosperity Partnership, but what I learned on that trip shocked me. And it shocked me that 
that it wasn't in the media and it shocked me that nobody knew what the Security and Prosperity Partnership was about and it shocked me that this was such a huge overarching agenda that was going to affect you know uh, Canada our sovereignty our democratic system and the future of our children and so I was I was um, really sh you know shocked about the whole thing I can't tell you how many times I was shocked but then I came back here again I was convinced by um, some folks at the CLC that I should come back for the demonstration that uh, when George Bush and Felipe Calderon were going to be in Montebello with Stephen Harper. And while I was there, I videotaped uh, Dave Coles confronting three police officers. Dave Coles being the uh, president of the CEP. Yeah. Canadian Communication Energy and Paper Workers Union. And he was confronting three masked men with rocks and bottles who were trying to incite violence at that protest at a peaceful protest and they turned out to be Sierra de Quebec police officers attacking their own riot squad and that just you know furthered my uh, desire to expose this whole thing and tell people what was going on because of that was outrageous well what what about the SPP undermines our democratic system is the fact that uh, we're we're letting corporations decide how we're re-regulating and harmonizing or deregulating and harmonizing our standards and practices between Canada the United States and Mexico outside of the parliamentary system there is no debate about this in in Parliament there's no debate about it in Congress and so it's it's very anti-democratic to uh, exclude labor environmental groups uh, citizens active uh, you know advocacy groups uh, consumer protection groups are all excluded from this discussion It is only corporations that are deciding and only the largest corporations that are deciding w what this whole process is about it's starting out in Parliament Hill it's I guess going across the country um, where can people go to find out more uh, www.umespp.com that's my uh, website for the film and on the screening page it lists all the uh, the 32 cities that I've booked and I've got invites to go to uh, Whitehorse and Yellowknife which will make it uh, every province and territory except for Nunavut are you trying to get into uh, the doc festivals that uh, that happen at very in various uh, centers across the country yeah I've submitted it to a number of festivals and haven't had it uh, picked up except by uh, Cliff, which is the Canadian Labour International Film Festival. Why do you think that is? What's your explanation for why this isn't getting picked up uh, by the uh, mainstream doc festivals? Uh, I'm not exactly sure, but uh, they get a lot of corporate sponsorship, and so you know when you have uh, BCE, uh, CTV, Bell Canada, which is basically all the same company uh, sponsoring a film festival and uh, you know they're one of the uh, North American Competitiveness Council members and they control a lot of media in this country that maybe they don't want it to, you know a film festival to be exposing this kind of issue. Okay, here's your big opportunity Paul why should I go see this film? You should go see this film because you will be outraged by what was being done in your name by our political leaders and the corporate elite in this country. Uh, they were pulling you know pulling this off without any public uh, discussion, without any public debate, and it is a huge agenda. People watch this film and they're shocked and, they, and have a lot of questions afterwards and just walk out going, I'd heard something about this, but I had no idea how huge this was. Thanks very much, Paul Manley, who is the filmmaker and the producer of You, Me, and the SPP.